from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering machine learning everywhere. Build your ladder to AI. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to New York City as we continue here at IBM's Machine Learning Everywhere, Build Your Ladder to AI, bringing it to you here on theCUBE, of course, the flagship broadcast of SiliconANGLE Media, and uh, Dave Vellante joins me here. Dave, good morning hey once again good to you, you, sir. And we're joined by Madhu Kochar, who is the Vice President of Analytics Development and Client Success at IBM. I like that, Client Success. Um, good to see you this morning. Thanks for joining yeah, us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, so, so let's bring up a, a four letter slash 10 letter word, governance, uh, that you know, some people just cringe right, right away, but that's very much in your wheelhouse. Uh, let's talk about that in terms of what you, you're having to be aware of today with data and these, this all of a sudden these great possibilities, right? But also on the other side, you got to be careful. And I know there, there's a, some clouds over in Europe as well, but let's just talk about your perspective on and governance and, and how it's important to get it all under one umbrella. Yeah, so I lead uh, product development for IBM Analytics governance and integration. And like you said, right, governance has, every time you talk that people cringe and you think it's a, it's a, it's a dirty word, but it's not anymore, right? Especially when you want to tie your AI ladder story, right? There is no AI without information architecture, no AI without IA. And if you think about IA, what does that really mean? It means the foundation of that is data and analytics. Now let's look deeper. What does that really mean? Uh, what is data and analytics? Data is coming at us like from everywhere, right? Uh, and there's records, uh, the data shows there's about 2.5 quintillion bytes of data getting generated every single day, raw data from everywhere. How are we going to make sense out of it, right? And from that perspective, it is just so important that you understand this type of data, what is the type of data, what's the classification of this means in a business. Um, you know, when you are running your business, there's a lot of cryptic fields out there. What is the business terms assigned to it? And what is the lineage of it? Where did it come from? If you do have to do any analytics, if data scientists have to do any analytics on it, they need to understand where did it actually originate it from? Can I even trust this data? Trust is really, really important here, right? And is the data clean? What is the quality of this data? The data is coming at us all raw formats from where IoT sensors and such. What is the quality of this data? To me, that is the real definition of governance, right? It's not just about uh, what we used to think about compliance. Yes, like that's a rule and a rag, right. But it's right, all about, right, about being right. appropriate with all the data you have coming in. Exactly. I call it governance 2.0 or governance for insights because that's what it needs to be all about, right? Compliance, yes, indeed, with GDPR and other things coming at us is important, but I think the most critical is that we have to change the term of governance into like this is that foundation for your AI ladder that is going to help us really drive the right insights. So that's that's my perspective. I, I want to double click on that because you're right. I mean, it is kind of governance 2.0. It used to be, uh, you know, Enron forced a lot of, you know, governance and the federal rules of civil procedure forced a lot of sort of even some artificial governance. And then I think organizations, especially public companies and large organizations said, "You know what? <laughs> we we can't just do this as a band-aid every time." <clears throat> you know, now GDPR Many companies are not ready for GDPR, we know that. Um, having said that, because it is, we went through governance 1.0, you know, many companies uh, are not panicked. I mean, they're kind of panicking because it's May is coming. <laughs> but they've been, been through this before. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that premise that, that, that they've got at least the skill sets and the professionals to, if they focus, they can get there pretty quickly? Yeah, no, I, I agree with that, but I think our technology and tools needs to change uh -huh. big time here, uh -huh. right? Because regulations are coming at us from all different angles. Um, everybody's looking to cut cost, right? right? You're not gonna hire more people to sit there and classify the data and say, hey, is this data ready for GDPR or for Basel or for Poppy like in South Africa? I mean, there's just yeah. tons of things, right? So I do think the technology needs to change and that's why you know, in our governance portfolio in IBM Information Server, we have infused machine learning in it, right? Mm. Where it's automatically, you have machine learning algorithms and models understanding your data, 
classifying the data. You know, you don't need humans to sit there and assign terms, the business terms to it. We have compliance built into our, um, it's running actually on machine learning. Uh, you can feed in taxonomy for GDPR. It would automatically tag your data in your catalog and say, hey, this is personal data. This is sensitive data, or this data is needed for these type of compliance. I mean, that's the aspect which I think we need to go focus on. Mm -hmm. So the companies, to your point, don't shrug every time they hear regulations, that it's kind of built in, right. in the DNA. But technologies have to change, the tools have to change. So to me, that's good news. If, <clears throat> if you're saying the technology and the tools is the gap. You know, we always talk about people, process, and technology, and you know, the bromide is, but it's true. People and process are the really mm -hmm. hard pieces of it. Mm -hmm. Technology comes and goes, mm -hmm. and, and people you know, kind of generally get, get used to that. So I'm inferring from your comments that you feel as though governance, there's a value component of governance yeah. now. Uh, yeah. It's not just a, a negative risk avoidance. It can be a contributor to value, you, you mentioned the example of, of classification, which I presume is auto-classification yes. at the point of, of use or creation, yes. Yes. which has been a real nagging problem for decades, especially after FRCP, uh, Federal Rules of Procedure for, for Civil Procedure, where it was like, ah, we can't figure this out, we'll do email archiving. Mm -hmm. You can't do this manually, it's just too much data, yeah. to, to your point. So I wonder if you could talk a little bit about governance and its contribution to value. Yeah, so, so this is a um, good question. I was just recently visiting some um, uh, large banks, mm -hmm. right? And normally, the governance and compliance has always been an IT job, right? Right. And they figure out a bunch of products. You know, you can download open source and do other things to quickly deliver data or insights to their business groups, right? and to, for business to further figure out new business models and such, right? Um, so, so recently what has happened is by doing machine learning into governance, you're making your IT guys the heroes because now they can deliver stuff very quickly mm -hmm. and the business guys are starting to get those insights and their thoughts on data is changing. You know, and recently I was talking with these banks where they're like, can you come and talk to our CFOs? Because I think the policies, the cultural change you referred to them, is maybe the data needs to be owned by businesses, mm. no longer an IT thing, right? So, so governance, I feel like, you know, governance and integration, I feel like it's a glue, which is helping us drive that cultural change in the organizations, bringing IT and the, the business groups together to further drive the insights. So for years, we've been talking about information as a, as a liability or an asset. And for decades, it was really viewed as a liability. Get rid of it if you can. If you have to keep it for seven years, then get rid of it. You know, That started to change you know, with the big data yeah. movement, but, but there was still sort of, it was hard, right? But um, what I'm hearing now is, Increasingly, especially if the business is sort of owning the data, it's becoming viewed as as an asset. Yes. You got to manage the liabilities. We got that, uh, but now how do we use it to drive business value? Yeah, yeah, no, exactly, and 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 that's where I think our focus in IBM Analytics with machine learning and automation, and and truly driving that insights out of the data. I mean, you know, people, we've been saying data is a natural resource, mm -hmm. it's our bloodline, it's this and that. It truly is, you know, and, and talking to the large enterprises, everybody is in their mode of digital transformation or transforming, right? We and IBM are doing the same things, right? We're eating our own Drinking our own champagne and, uh, <laughs> let, and, and cool you know, yeah, right yeah, to the dog. yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, and, dog <laughs> <laughs> no dog food here. No dog food. Drinking our own champagne, and and truly, we are seeing transformation in how we are running our own business as well. Yeah, right. what uh, there are always surprises. There are always some you know accidents kind of waiting to happen. But in terms of, of the IoT, you know, we've got these millions right of sensors, mm -hmm. you know, feeding data in, and, and and what from a governance perspective is maybe a concern about, about you know, an unexpected source or an unexpected problem or something where you, know, you have great capabilities, but with those capabilities might come a surprise or two in terms of, of protecting data and a machine might provide perhaps a little more insight than you might have expected. So I mean, just looking down the road from your perspective, you know, 
is there anything along those lines that, that you're putting up flags for just to keep an eye on to see what new inputs might create new problems for you? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I mean, we're always looking at how do we further do innovation, how do we disrupt ourselves, and make sure that data doesn't become our enemy, right? I mean, it's, mm. it's it, it, you know, as we are talking about AI, people are starting to ask a lot of questions about ethics and other things mm -hmm. too, right? So very critical. So obviously, when you focus on governance, the point of that is let's take the manual stuff out, make it much faster, but part of the governance is that we are protecting you, right? That's part of that security and understanding of the data. It's all about that you don't end up in jail, right? That, that, that's the, the real focus in terms of our technology and tools that we're looking at. So, uh, so maybe help our audience a little bit. So I, I described at our open AI as sort of the, the umbrella and machine learning is the, the math and the algorithms yeah. that you apply to, 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 to train systems to, to do things maybe better than, mm -hmm. not maybe, better than, than humans can do. And then there's deep learning, which is you know, neural nets and so forth. But, am I understanding that you've essentially, first of all, is that sort of, a, I know it's rudimentary, but is it reasonable? And then you, it sounds like you've infused ML into your software. Yes. Um, and so I wonder if you could comment on that and then describe from the client standpoint what skills they need to take advantage of that, if any. Oh yeah, no, so um, embedding ML into a software, like a packaged software which gets delivered to a client, people don't understand actually how powerful that is because your data, your catalog is learning, is continuously mm. learning from the system itself, from the data itself, right? Mm. And, and that's very exciting. The value to the clients really is it cuts down their cost big time. Let me give you an example. In a large organization today, for example, if they have like maybe 22,000 some terms, it normally it would take them close to six months for one application with a team of 20 to sit there and assign the, the, the terms, the right business glossary mm. for their business to their data. So by now doing machine learning in our software, we can do this in days, even even hours obviously depending on what's the, the quantity of the data in the organization, that's the value. So the value to the clients is cutting down that, they can f take those folks and go focus on some you know, bigger value add applications and others and take advantage of that data. The other, the other huge value that I see is as the business changes, the machine can help you ad adapt. Yeah. I mean, the, the taxonomies are like cement, data classification, and it's, well, we can't, you know, move the business forward because we have this classification. Can your machines adapt, you know, in, in real time? Yeah. And can they change at the speed of my business yeah. is my question. Right, right, no, it, it is, right? And, and clients are um, not able to move on their transformation journey because they don't have data classified done right, mm -hmm. you know? And you can put humans to it. You're gonna need the technology, you're gonna need the machine learning algorithms and the AI built into your software to get that. And that will lead to really success of every client. So Madhu, broader question. The, one of the good things about things like GDPR is it forces, it puts a deadline on there and we all, you know, give, me, give me a deadline and I'll hit it. Um, so it sort of forces action. Mm -hmm. um, and that's good, we've talked about the value that you can bring to an organization from, from a data perspective, but there's this whole non-governance component of data orientation. How do you see that going? Can, can the governance initiatives catalyze sort of what, what I would call a data, you know, people talk about a data-driven organization. Most companies, they may say they are data-driven, but they're really not foundational. Mm -hmm. Can governance initiatives catalyze that transformation to a data-driven organization, and if so, how? Yeah, no, absolutely, right? So the like, example I was sharing earlier with when talking to some of the large financial institutes, where the business guys, you know, outside of IT are talking about how important it is for them to get the data, literally real time, right, and self-service. They don't want to be dependent on either opening a work ticket for somebody in IT to produce data for them and God forbid if somebody's out on vacation, they can never get that. Right. We, we're, we don't live in that world anymore, right? It's online, it's real time, it's all you know, self-service type of aspects which the business, the data scientists, building new analytic models are looking for that. 
So for that, data is the key, key core foundation and governance, the way I explained it earlier, is not just about compliance. That is going to lead to that transformation for every client. It's, it's the core. They, they, they will not be successful without that. And the attributes are changing. Um, not only is it self-service, it's, it's pervasive, it's yeah. embedded, yeah. it's aware. It's it's anticipatory. Um, are, am, am I overstating that? No. I mean, is, da is the data going to find me? Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> you know, so no, you are. I think I think you got it. This is absolutely the the right focus, and th and the companies and the enterprises who understand this and use the right technology to fix it, th they'll win. And so right, they'll and win. the other part of that, maybe I, I don't know if it is a contextual. I mean, I mean, so. Yeah also make it relevant yes. to me and, and help me understand its relevance because yes. maybe as a, I hate to say as a human, yes. you know, maybe you just don't have that yes. kind of prism. Yeah. But can that, does that happen oh, as well too? That yeah, you know, no. it can put up these white flags and say, yeah, this is what you need. Yeah, no, absolutely. So like the focus we have on our natural language processing, for example, right? If you're looking for something, you don't have to always know what your SQL going to be for a query to do it. You just type in, hey, I'm looking for some customer retention data you know, and it will go out and figure it out and say, hey, are you you know, looking for churn analysis or are you looking to do some more promotions? It will learn, you know, and that's where this whole aspect of machine learning and natural language processing is going to give you that contextual aspect of it uh, because that's how the self-service models will work. Right. What about skills? John asked me at the open about, about skill sets, and, and I want to ask a general question, but then specifically about, about governance. I, I would make the assertion that most, or most employees don't have the multi-dimensional digital skills and domain expertise skills today. Yeah. Some companies they do, the, 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 the big you know, data companies. Um, but in governance, because it's 2.0, do you feel like the skills are largely there to take advantage of the innovations that IBM is, is coming out with? I think uh, I generally, in my personal opinion is the way the technology is moving, the way we are getting driven by a lot of disruptions which are happening around us, I think we don't have the right skills out there, mm -hmm. right? We all have to retool. I'm sure all of us in yeah. our career have done this all the time, <laughs> you know? So, so it, I, to me, I don't think we have it. So. Building the right tools, the right technologies, and enabling the resources that the teams out there to retool themselves so they can actually focus on innovation in their own enterprises is going to be critical. Mm -hmm. And that's why I really think more burn I can take off from the IT groups, more we can make them smarter and have them do their work faster. It will help give that time to go see, hey, what's their next big disruption in, in their organization? Is it fair to say that traditionally governance has been a, a, a very people intensive mm -hmm. activity? Will governance, you know, in the next, let's say, decade, uh, become essentially automated? That's the whole, that's my desire, and with the product job, huh? which are, with us <laughs> my job, and I'm actually really proud of what we have done thus far, and where we are heading, so next time when we meet, uh, <laughs> we will be talking maybe governance 3.0, <laughs> I don't know, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's the thing, right? I mean, I think you hit it on the nail, that this is, we got to take a lot of human intensive stuff out of these, our products, and uh, more automation we can do, more smarts we can build in. I coined this term like, hey, we got to build smarter metadata, right? Mm -hmm. Data needs to, metadata is all about data of your data, right? That needs to become smarter. Think about having a universe where you don't have to sit there and connect the dots and say, I want to move from here to there. Uh, system already under knows it. They understand yeah. your behaviors. They know what your applications is going to do and kind of automatically right. does it for you. No more science fake. I think we can <laughs> make it happen. You think we'll ever have more metadata than data? I wonder. <laughs> Actually, somebody did ask me that question. Will we be figuring out here we're building data lakes? Will we have to, what do we do about metadata? No, I think we will not have that problem no, for a while. We'll make it too smarter. Fast, right? You're but right. It is, it's right. like working within your workforce and you're telling people, you know, you're a treasure hunter. Yeah. And we're going to give you a better map. Yeah. So governance is your is your better map. So, hey, you I know, like so that. Maybe me. we'll use it next yeah, time. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's true. It's like you're saying governance is your friend here, and yes. we're gonna we're gonna fine tune your search. We're gonna make you a more efficient employee. We're gonna make you a smarter person, and you're gonna be able to contribute in a much better way. But 
it's almost enforced. Yeah. But let it be your friend, not your foe. Yes. Yeah. Be, right? a, be your differentiator, right? Yeah. But my takeaway is it's fundamental. It's embedded. You know, you're, you're doing this now with, with less thinking. Uh, security's got to get to the same mm -hmm. same play. But for years, security, ah, oh, it slows me down. But, but now people are like, hey, help me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think the same dynamic is, is true here, embedded governance in my business. Not a bolt-on, not an afterthought. It's fundamental and foundational to my organization. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, right. Madhu, thank you for the time. We mentioned on, on the outset by the interview, that said, if you want to say hi to your kids, that's your camera right there. Do you want to say hi to your kids real quick? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> hi, Mohit, Kirpa. I love you so much. There you <laughs> go. All right. Thank you. So they, they know where mom is. <laughs> New York <laughs> thank City. You. IBM's machine learning everywhere. Uh, build your ladder to AI. Thank you for joining us, Madhu. Thank Kajar. you. Yeah. Thank Back you. with more here from New York in just a bit. You're watching theCUBE.